And good morning and welcome. Glad to be coming to you on this uh, new technology that we call Facebook Live. And I think also YouTube. And I want to give all uh, uh, the New Life uh, Church family a shout out this morning and say, God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning as we come to you to worship the Lord and to minister his word. Um, this has kind of taken this preacher out of his comfort zone because I'm normally used to preaching to people that I can see their eyeballs and uh, I can read their expressions. And so this morning is going to be kind of an interesting opportunity for me as I look into a camera and have no idea who it is out there in the world that is going to be listening in. But our, our endeavor is by faith this morning because the Church of Jesus Christ is a community of faith. And so today, we certainly want to always honor the Lord with our faith and our obedience and the opportunity that we have to be able to worship him and to come to you in this way. So without anything else, I wanna just stop right here and pause and uh, let's have a word of prayer and ask God's blessing on our time today. So our Heavenly Father, we come before you today thanking you and praising you and blessing your name giving you, Lord, the, uh, the thanksgiving for another day that you've given us, the opportunity to be able to get up out of bed and to move around, to be able to uh, gather in a virtual format uh, as the church, the body of Christ, to be able to minister your word. So we pray that as your word goes forward today, dear God, that you would be able to bless it and superintend over it. Lord, help us in our music and help us in our time of uh, focusing on you through the word of God today, that our, our spirits would be encouraged, our faith would be increased, and that the word of God would go forward with power and uh, conviction and to do the work in the hearts of men and women and boys and girls and teenagers and people from all walks of life, dear God, uh, that they'll be blessed by the power and the ministry of your word today. May our worship be pleasing in your sight. We ask it in Jesus' precious name, and amen. Good morning again. I am as equally uncomfortable singing to a camera as Pastor Sam is speaking to one because, yes, it's awkward, but uh, I trust that people are out there and I trust that these words will be lifted and God will amplify them in your hearts. And I uh, picked a couple of songs that I hope most everybody knows, Amazing Grace and uh, Shout to the Lord. I'm just going to sing them both. And uh, I'll have to ask Pastor Sam to be my audio guide to tell me if I need to sing louder or less.
soon dissolve like snowflakes. The sun forbid to shine, but God for singing along. I know you were out there doing it. Joy at the work of your hands forever. 
Greg, that is so very true. Nothing compares to the promise that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is um, kind of an interesting season that we find ourselves in. And uh, during the week, I'm I'm actually out on the road a lot, and I've been blessed with a, an opportunity to deliver uh, medicine and medical supplies to patients that are at home and convalescing. And uh, so. Uh, I, I have a lot of thinking time, I have a lot of uh, driving time, and uh, very little <laughs> uh, seeing people except for maybe when I stop to get gas or something like that because during this time I, I don't even have to get signatures to, uh, to deliver the medicine. I leave it at the door and take a picture and then I get back on my way. So I find myself driving, driving all around the greater Cincinnati area, cutting through downtown and then out into the country and I'm seeing all kinds of different things and I'm going to all kinds of different places. This week I've been down to Louisville twice and Lexington once and, and, and only the good Lord knows all the other places that I've forgotten that I've been. But one thing that has just blessed me is not only that God gave me an opportunity to, to have something to do during this time when uh, so much has been kind of pulled out from underneath us and uh, it's just a difficult time for people, and this is not the way that the Church of Jesus Christ would, would choose to worship. We are instructed in the Word of God to gather and to assemble together and, and everything like that, and that's where our heart's desire is. And I noticed, as uh, Greg was seeing, that we've got uh, family and friends and church members and people from a lot of different places that are already gathering with us this morning. So I want to say to you, welcome. I'm glad that you're with us. Uh, thank you, Annie, uh, for your encouragement. Um, as Greg was singing, I did close my eyes and I was singing along with him quietly. I didn't want my voice to be heard and uh, hopefully it wasn't, but I was worshiping the Lord right here in this living room like I do um, every other day in my car when I'm driving around uh, town and uh, nothing else to do but to get to my destination and to be able to focus on the Lord, to be able to take that time and to direct my mind uh, heavenward and to be able to think about the good Lord and, and uh, to ask him to be able to give me uh, a message that I could bring to you this morning. So this morning I'm going to go to the book of Galatians chapter number six and our text comes from verse number 14. And for the next few minutes I want to speak to you about this thought. I want you to think about this. In the spirit of the cross, in the spirit of the cross. So our text says this, Galatians 6 and verse 14, but God forbid, Paul writing, that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful this morning for your word, thankful for its power, thankful, Lord, for uh, the saving grace that comes to us as the word of God uh, is ministered and preached and read and studied. Uh, Lord, we just ask today that you would be able to work in our hearts and our lives, direct our attention for the next few minutes, dear Lord, uh, into these scriptures, strengthen our faith, encourage us. Lord, if somebody's listening in today that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray today that you would speak to them through this preacher and this broadcast, Lord, that they might hear the words of life and receive them into their life and to exercise saving faith and repentance of sin, that they would be able to come to Jesus and understand uh, something more about what it means to be in the spirit of the cross than, than before this day came. 
So now, dear God, we ask that you would be able to direct our thoughts and our attention and that our worship would be pleasing in your sight. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. If you were here with me, I know I'd hear you say that. But I love what Paul says here in Galatians 6 and verse 14. When he says, God forbid that I should glory. Now, men have lots of things that they like to glory about. One of the things I think a lot of Americans are missing right now is, is our sports. Uh, you know, the basketball season was cut short. And baseball's been called off. And we don't know about football and all these things. But if you think about it, if I were to name the man's name, this name, if I said Tiger Woods, you'd probably start thinking about, boy, he's a golf legend in the making. He's got all these trophies and, and has, has quite a resume. And if I said the name Pete Rose here in Cincinnati, everybody would get happy about that. And they would think about the glory days of the big red machine. They would think about how Pete was Char Mr. Charlie Hustle. He would run around the bases and give... 110% to the game every time he suited up and put on the Reds uh, uniform. We could, we could say Michael Jordan. And we would all, in our mind, we'd be able to see him flying through the air with one of those massive dunks through the rim and, and the whole Coliseum uh, cheering him on. And wow, what a good. And we would say, boy, those guys have lots of glory to, to be able to look at. They would be able to show us trophies, they would be able to show us all kinds of things. Pictures maybe of different opportunities and different times in their career in sports where well, they did something that was just outstanding, something really great. And they would glory in it. And the Apostle Paul here is uh, laying down a thought for us this morning I think is worthy of our consideration. He said, God forbid that I should glory, he said, except or save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, men can look at their achievements and say, boy, that's what I'm all about. That's what I can do. That's what I did do. And they would glory in those achievements. But the Apostle Paul is very careful that he wouldn't glory in anything else except, he says, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the next few minutes, I want us to focus on the spirit of the cross. What does it mean when we talk about in the spirit of the cross? Paul laid down a thought that he wouldn't glory in anything else except for the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I think that's a pretty interesting thought when you think about the fact that before he was born again on that, that fateful day, this man went around persecuting Christians, throwing them in jail, seeing to it that some of them were put to death, doing everything he could to stop the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He, he, he did, his life was not lived for that purpose at that time of his life. And so once the Lord came into his life and he exercised faith and was dramatically saved, his whole purpose of life was directed towards the ministry of the gospel of Jesus. And that's what he said that he was going to glory in. He didn't care about the glory that came from fame or the glory that came from riches, or the glory that came from status and power among men. Those were not the things that he was living his life for. Paul cared about the glory of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he wrote, if you would, with a heavenly logic that far surpasses anything here on earth. I like what Charles Spurgeon said about that thought. He said, and I quote, Speaking of Paul, he means the glorious doctrine of justification, free justification through uh, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You see, the cross uh, was transformed from an instrument of death and of punishment and suffering into the symbol of hope the world over. And wherever you go in this world and you find Christian churches, you'll see oftentimes that they're adorned with crosses. They, they, they have them up on the steeple. They might have them up behind the preacher on the wall, above the baptistry. They may be on the front of the pulpit. But if you think about it, the cross 
has been transformed from a, a means of execution and suffering to the symbol of hope the world over. And it blesses people whenever they come to the foot of the cross and there they meet the Savior who loved them and died for them and gave himself for them. So when I think of the cross, I think in terms of the spirit of the cross. We ask ourselves the question this morning, but then, preacher, what is it that is the spirit of the cross? It's a good question. That's what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. First of all, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, Paul, again, is expounding on this truth. And he says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13, he wrote, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So the first thing I would share is this. The cross, or the spirit of the cross, is life-giving. We offer life to those who are yet dead in trespasses and sins. And that's what Jesus is all about. I was writing this week and, and I heard this song, I think every day, it's a popular song that's out there right now on Christian radio, and there's a line in it that says something, it catches me. Every time I hear it, it just stops me almost, you know, dead in my tracks, even though I was typically driving. Uh, but the, the line says this, I was a dead man walking. Well, it's kind of a strange thought when you think about it, because dead people don't walk. But he's not talking about, in that song, he's not talking about physical death. He's talking about spiritual death or separation from God. And so before a person gets saved, that individual is a dead man walking because we're dead in trespasses and sins. And I love the fact that the cross of Jesus Christ is life-giving. Amen, church? Amen. It is life-giving. The second thing I'll share with you is not only is the cross life-giving, but the cross is life-changing. Those of us who have been around for any uh, amount of time know 2 Corinthians 5, 17 very well. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. I love that thought. He's a new creature. And Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says this, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Here, Paul is talking about the fact that the cross of Jesus Christ, when a person comes to that point of faith, where they exercise faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, him crucified, crucified and risen again, that, that there is new life that comes, and of course, there is a changed life that results. That's a wonderful blessing because I love the fact that Jesus doesn't leave us the way he finds us. There was a young man years ago that was in my ministry that was unsaved and I had talked to him a number of times about the Lord, witnessed to him, went to his house a number of times and, and he had a problem with getting saved right then. He told me, he said, you know, I, he, he had seen his uncle get saved and there was a radical change in his uncle's life, I mean the difference between uh, day and night, darkness and light. I mean, it, his life was just transformed uh, radically so. And this young man was like, I don't think I want my life to be like that. I think what I'll do is when I'm ready, when I get good enough, then I'll get saved. And I remember telling him, Angelo, it's never going to happen that way. It's like you're saying, I want to take a bath so that I can go take a bath. I want to get clean so that I can go get clean. That, that's not, you see, God does the saving. We can't do it for ourselves or, or we wouldn't need Jesus Christ. And so Paul's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ having a radical transformation in the life of those who exercise faith in the Lord Jesus. In fact, the word transformed in Romans 12 and verse 2 is the word that we get our word metamorphosis. It's what happens when a caterpillar uh, wraps all the silk around itself and makes a little cocoon and, and he hangs there for a while and there's a, a radical transformation that takes place in the time that he is sealed up in the cocoon and when it's time and the transformation is over 
he emerges out of that cocoon, but he's no longer a caterpillar crawling around. He's now a beautiful butterfly with wings and he takes flight and it's a, it's a radical transformation. It's very different from what he was before he got into that cocoon. And that's in the spirit of the cross, what we find is that Jesus radically transforms the life of the believer who has passed from death unto life and he touches every aspect of our lives, who we are, how we relate to one another, you know, as believers and, and even to the world around us. So he doesn't leave any stone in our life unturned. I love the fact that when he saves us, not only does he give us life, but he changes us and transforms us and makes us into the image of our lovely Savior. We become more Christ-like. In my experience, I found that many believers found religion and they filled churches, yet they never found Christ, nor are they filled with his spirit. There's a big difference between going to church and being a Christian, a true Christian. So if your life has not been transformed, my friend, you're not born from above. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. The third thing about the spirit of the cross is this, in 2 Corinthians Chapter 5 and verse number 19, the Apostle Paul again writing says, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The spirit of the cross is in a word, it's reconciliation. It's, it's sinful man being reconciled to a holy God. And it would take the death of God's Son to accomplish that. If we back up one verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and read verse number 18, Paul said this, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. God has a way of not just reaching down out of heaven to, to save us and to reconcile us unto himself, but he gives us then as his children, his believers, his church, he gives us the ministry of reconciliation that we reach out to friends and neighbors and co-workers and people from all walks of life that we have influence with so that we might be able to share the ministry of Jesus Christ and in the spirit of the cross, bring reconciliation to them as well. You see, I'm not satisfied in just taking what God has for me and just kind of hoarding it to myself. I want others to experience the same joy and the peace and all the blessings that go along with being saved so that in the spirit of the cross, many souls can be reconciled to God and brought into a right relationship with him and that we are then committed to us, his ministry of reconciliation, to go and to tell the world of their need and of the Savior who will meet their lead and it's really an amazing thing when you think about it because today, I think more than maybe any other time in my life, I don't want to overstate it, but it would seem to me that the church is struggling to fulfill this part of ministry because of a thing that has become a term that has become all too familiar to us in the last couple of months, social distancing. We're trying to do what those who understand something about this, at least they say they more know more about it than we do, to try to protect other lives, to try to stop the spread of a virus that we know little about. And inside of every blood-bought, born-again Christian it is a heart that God transformed that's beating like his heart. And he has a heart for people, and he... He's about saving people from all walks of life. And Christians, I think, pastors, this is very unusual for me. I've never done Sunday morning like this. A week ago, we were preaching out in the cul-de-sac, and at least there was people gathered there. And though we were online also, at least there was a gathering of people that we could sing together and we could worship together, even though we kept a certain distance between ourselves. But here I am today with just Ace and Greg listening to me, and then anybody that's joined in on the internet and it's a live broadcast. 
but we have a yearning. We have a desire. We have this thing that is pushing us forward saying the ministry of Jesus Christ will not be stopped. God is still in the business of changing lives and transforming people that birthing them out of dead works and darkness into light and into life. God is still in the business of doing the work of ministry and he's saving souls today like he was yesterday and he will be if he gives us another day tomorrow. I love what a pastor friend of mine always used to say and I think still does in his preaching. Kevin Ham would say that the gospel of Jesus Christ came to you on its way to someone else. That's true. We're not just to be like the Dead Sea where there's water that flows in and it just pulls up there. No no outlet, no way for it to go anywhere or do anything and, and just to kind of pull up the water there. No, my friend, we are to be a, a, a conduit for the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to be moving around this world and reaching people from all walks of life, wherever they are, because the truth is this, the gospel did come to you on its way to someone else. So we experience it from God and we model it before the world. We want the world to see that there is a difference about us. We've been reconciled and transformed to God by his amazing power. And yet we're not satisfied to just let it stay there. It, there's a burning desire within the Christian heart to reach people who are lost and undone and groping in darkness, who need the Lord Jesus Christ and need what he offers them. The spirit of the cross is not just life-giving and life-changing, but it is reconciling. And lastly this morning, the spirit of the cross, and I love this as much as any other part of this message, is the spirit of the cross is peace. Colossians 1 and verse 20 says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things on, in earth or things in heaven. In Ephesians 2 and verse 13 and 14, But now is Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. In verse 14, For he, Christ, is our peace. You see, in the spirit of the cross, church, we are at peace with God, no longer far off and alienated from God, but brought nigh, brought near, brought close to the bosom and to the heart of God by the precious blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed us and washed us from all of our unrighteousness, all of our unrighteous deeds, all of the sins that we've ever committed or ever will commit are cleansed under the crimson flow of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, my friend, he has made peace for us. That's a wonderful truth today to focus on. Because so many of us are anxious. I've been hearing in the news that depression is on the rise and there's a spike in suicides. And we suspect it's from this isolation and and the troubles that people are facing as a result of, of losing their job, perhaps, or uh, not knowing about the future, not knowing if they're going to have a mo enough money to, to get through to when we can all begin to go back to work and, and get back to a more normal sense of life. And this thing called COVID-19 has, in a very real way, has instilled fear in people and has robbed them of the ability to be able to have peace. I'm here to tell you this morning, beloved, that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the God of heaven today like he was yesterday and like he will be tomorrow. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. The blessing of the cross is that we experience peace with God because of his shed blood, for the remission of our sins. And we strive to be at peace with all men, people who are believers and people who are non-believers. We, as believers, it's our desire to be at peace with all men because God has made peace for us and he has instilled his peace to us. I love the imagery of what he did on that night on the Sea of Galilee when the storm rose up and the 
the disciples were fearful and yes they were uh, men who had been you know on the sea and and fishermen and they were not uh, out of their comfort zone so to speak in that but but the storm was especially bad and they began to fear for their lives and they went to Jesus and they they awoke him he was asleep in the ship and yet the storm was about they fear to take the ship down into the depths of the water and that they would all perish and they they ask him that question master do you not care that we're about to perish Jesus rebuked the wind and the seas and he just simply spoke a simple sentence three words peace be still and I'm here to remind you friend this morning Jesus is still the peace speaker listen to his spirit speak to your spirit and you'll hear his voice and though we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring we can warm up to the bosom of God and rest in him that he has our tomorrow prepared today before we ever get to it we just have to trust in him and believe in him and so I'll leave you with these thoughts this morning first of all if you're here and you're listening in and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior oh let friend let this be the day of your salvation put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him and he will give you life and he will give you peace and he will reconcile you unto himself he will transform you from the person that you are to the person that he desires for you and it's simply done by repenting of your sins and trusting in the death burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the payment of your sins and when we bow our head and we open up our heart of faith to God in that way and we agree with him that we're sinners and yet we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as as they told the Philippian jailer he said to them sirs what must I do to be saved and they said believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and I would just say to you this morning if you never have done that friend what are you waiting for believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you too shall be saved but for the Christians that are listening in this morning I'll leave you with these two takeaways first of all the spirit of the cross goes against the inclination of natural man. You need the spirit of God to overcome the sin nature. You can't do it of your own power and of your own volition. If you could, you wouldn't need Jesus Christ as your savior. And so I just want to remind you that the spirit of the cross, which, which has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, that we propagate the gospel so that other people can be saved. We support the work of the church so that lives can be transformed. We do the work of ministry because God has given us a command to do the work of ministry. But we can't do it in our own power. We must rely upon the power of the Spirit of God to equip us and to empower us and to give us the ability to do the things that we do for the glory of God and for His kingdom. And so I just want to leave you with that. Remember that the spirit of the cross, it goes the, against the inclination of the natural man. You're going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit of God to give you the power to live out that life and to overcome the fleshly desires that are within each and every one of us. The second takeaway is this. The spirit of the cross requires more from you than you can give. It requires more than you can give. And that's why you need the living Lord to empower you to do the things that he has taught us to do. For instance, you cannot turn the other cheek without God giving you the ability to turn the other cheek when it's necessary. You cannot give away your coat when someone asks you of, their, of your cloak. You won't be able to go the second mile after you've already gone the first mile without God's help. You can't do it. I can't do it. And so I leave you with those thoughts this morning. In the spirit of the cross, if you're going to be all that God wants you to be, 
if you're going to have the impact in this world that he desires for you to have, you must rely on his spirit to give you the power to live out that life in this world. Well, let us pray. So our Heavenly Father this morning, it is a blessing and a pleasure and a joy in this preacher's heart to be able to come to God's people in this way today. Lord, that we might be able to unite our hearts, even though we're virtually gathered and there's a lot of distance between us, we are yet gathered in your name and our spirit, our heart, is that we would not just receive your word this morning, but Lord, that we would be able to live out your word in this world. That in the spirit of the cross, we would be at peace with all men, as much as we can be. Lord, that in the spirit of the cross, we would be concerned about the neighbor next door or across the street or that coworker, and that we would give them the gospel of Jesus Christ and invite them to faith in him. Lord, that in the spirit of the cross, we would know that we have been brought from death unto life and that we are to have this abundant life that Jesus talked about, living to the full and the free. Lord, that we as your people are not living and cowering in fear and anxiety and depression today, but Lord, that we're living in victory and in faith, knowing that this too shall pass. And one day, Lord, we're going to all look back on this and be amazed at what you did through it. So I pray that there would be a reviving of your people and that our spirits would grow. And we would use extra time, Lord, that we have now that we normally don't have because the interruption of our schedules is such that we would use that time to draw near to your heart. Bless your people today, Lord. We ask with peace. We ask that you would give them your spirit to calm their heart and their fears where they would be gripped with it. And that, Lord, today that we would live in light of eternity and that we would purpose to live our lives in the spirit of the cross to bring reconciliation to those who are yet without Jesus. And we'll thank you for your blessings and your favors. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. Thank you. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.